Well, you might have heard of the TV show called Breaking Bad. It's a show which centers around a man called Walter White, who's a quite average Joe in many ways. He's a chemistry teacher, family man. But he has some devastating news at the start of the TV show when he discovers out that he's got terminal lung cancer. In an attempt to try and provide for his family, he starts doing something pretty questionable to make more money. He starts dealing drugs. But as time goes on, this drug dealing intensifies. It started out with good intentions to provide for his family, but pretty soon it became about more selfish reasons and seeing how much money he could possibly make. There's a principle there that we see true in maybe different ways in our own human hearts. Even our very good deeds as humans, as time passes, become tainted by our own selfishness and our own sin. And that's something we see evidenced in the life of even the great King Solomon in this chapter of 1 Kings. Well, you might remember in chapter 5 of 1 Kings, King Solomon expressed his desire to build a temple for the Lord following the instruction of his father David. And then in chapter 6, this temple building project is well underway. And so as you come to chapter 7, you would expect this story of the temple being built just to continue. But quite surprisingly, the story of the temple being built doesn't continue until verse 13. It's almost this interruption in the narrative from verses 1 to 12. It's this thing, this break, this distraction. And that's intentional from the author because what's happening in verses 1 to 12 really is a distraction. It appears that Solomon is becoming distracted. What's he doing in verses 1 to 12? Well, he's not building a temple for the Lord. He's actually building a palace for himself. And we're getting these small hints that perhaps King Solomon's loyalties are becoming torn. You can see hints in the passage itself. If you see in verse 1 of chapter 7, we're told that King Solomon spent a whopping 13 years building his own palace. Now, if you recall the last verse of chapter 6, you'll see that he spent just seven years building a temple for the Lord. So he's spending almost twice as long building his own temple, his own palace, as opposed to a temple for the Lord. Furthermore, you'll see in verse 8 that he said that Solomon was doing all this for Pharaoh's daughter, who he's now married to. You'll recall from previous episodes that it was actually forbidden for an Israelite king like Solomon to intermarry with a pagan woman. But furthermore, you might remember at the start of chapter 6 that we were told that this whole building of the temple process, it was actually in many ways a fulfillment of God's promises to the people of Israel in the Exodus. And what happened in the Exodus? Well, God redeemed his people from the harsh rule of an evil Pharaoh. The man whose daughter King Solomon is now married to and who he's dedicating the temple and the palace to. Solomon's heart is becoming in many ways compromised. His loyalties are becoming divided. This passage really gives us a, a warning and also an encouragement. Firstly, a warning. Solomon's heart has become divided, but you might recall that there were small signs of that happening way back at the start of 1 Kings, even as early as chapter 3. But now we see that these little small compromises are contributing to something so much greater and so much more destructive. And so that principle is quite often true in our lives. We don't always immediately grow cold in our Christian faith. We don't always abandon our loyalty to Jesus Christ just like that. Quite often it's a result of a number of small compromises over time which snowball and ultimately contribute to a far greater destruction. In what areas of your life could you be compromised in what might seem to you like a very small way in your Christian faith? And how does this passage warn you? But secondly, there's an encouragement in this passage. You know, as we think about the temple as new covenant believers, we think of passages such as John chapter 2, where Jesus actually foretells a day when that physical temple would be destroyed. Ultimately, that came to pass, didn't it, in AD 70? But what Jesus says after that is quite striking. He says, it will be rebuilt in three days. The temple will be destroyed, but it will be rebuilt in three days. <laughs> John helpfully inserts in verse 21 that Jesus is referring to his own body. In other words, Jesus is our temple. So the temple was a place where people went to meet with God, but now that Jesus is our temple, our ability to meet with God isn't limited to a building. No, we have unity with God the Father through Jesus Christ who offers his body in our place and reconciles our relationship with God the Father and grants us unlimited and continual access to God as our Father. That's why the New Testament continually describes Christians as those who are in Christ. It's this beautiful picture of our unity with God through the finished work of Jesus on the cross. He is our temple and through him our worship of God and our experience of intimacy with God isn't limited to a building. 
but it's found in and through the work of our temple, the Son of God, Jesus Christ.